In this, in this section, we'll work on how to factor trinomials. Remember, a trinomial means that there are three terms. So in the last section, we looked at how to factor uh, polynomials with four terms primarily. In this section, we'll look at how to factor things with three terms. So the first thing we need to do to factor something with three terms is to put it in standard form. So that means that we put the uh, x squared first, and then the x, and then the number. ax squared plus bx plus c. Then we need to look for a greatest common factor between all three terms. We'll pull that out, and then we'll deal with what's left. Um, then we multiply a times c. We'll call that product d just for a minute. We'll look for two numbers that multiply to get d and add to get b. We'll write those numbers as denominators of fractions with a on top. And then we'll reduce. And then we'll write use these reduced fractions to write our factored terms. Again, we need to pay very careful attention to the signs. The number that's in front of the number stays with the number. So remember that if you add two positive numbers, you get a positive number. If you add two negative numbers, you get a negative number. And if you add a positive and a negative, you get the sign of the bigger number. If you multiply two positive numbers, you get positive. If you multiply two negative numbers, you also get positive. And if you multiply a positive and a negative, you always get a negative. So it's really going to be important that you keep these rules separate, that the ideas are separate um, in your head as we look at multiplication and addition. If nothing can be factored, we call it prime, just like we have prime numbers that can't be broken down any further. So let's look at this. So here we have a 1 in front, really. So that tells us that this is a is 1, b is a number in front of x, that's 16, and c is this number at the end, 63. So the first we look for anything that's in common between 1, 16, and 63, and there isn't any. So we don't have to worry about the greatest common factor in this problem. Then we'll take a times c. So that's 1 times 63, and we get 63. We'll put that number up here. We're going to want to find two numbers that multiply to 63 and add to get this 16, this middle number. We'll put that down here. So this is our multiplication number. This is our addition number. So we'll look at all the factors of 63. 63 can be 1 times 63. We can't do 63 divided by 2, but we can do 63 divided by 3. That's 21. 63 divided by 4 does not work. 63 divided by 5 does not come out evenly, so it does not work. 63 divided by 6 does not work, but 63 does divide by 7. It's 9. 63 does not divide by 8. 63 does divide by 9, but we already have that written down. When we get to a number that we already have written down, we know we've got all the possible combinations. So now we need to find a pair that adds to 16. So that's these numbers right here. We'll put those numbers, once we found them, on the outsides of our x. So here's our little um, combinations that we need to pay attention to. So. Once we find this 7 and this 9, we're going to write fractions with a on top. So we have 1 over 7 and then 1 over 9. Now neither one of those can be reduced, so we're going to use those to write our factors. So we'll write our two sets of parentheses. This was an x squared here, so that x squared is broken up evenly between those two um, tops. So x times x. So we're going to write these straight down. We have 1x plus 7 and then 1x 
reading straight down, plus 9. When we, as we read down, we can write them in our parentheses. Now we don't usually write 1x, we usually write x. So we have x plus 7 and x plus 9. And that's our factor of that trinomial. Now you could FOIL this to check it. If we did x times x, we would get x squared. x times 9 is 9x. 7 times x is 7x. And then 7 times 9 is 63. We add like terms, we get x squared plus 16x plus 63, which is what we started with, and that's how we know we've got it right. Let's look at another one. So here again we have a is 1, b is negative 9, and c is 14. We need to be really careful when we have negatives that we include them. So is there a greatest common factor? There is not. So we'll find a times c, and that's 14. So we'll write 14 up here and our negative 9 down here. So we want to list all our factors of 14. That's 1 times 14, 2 times 7. 3 doesn't go in, 4 doesn't go in, 5 doesn't go in, 6 doesn't go in, and 7 we already have written down, so that's all the possibilities. Now, remember we want a positive 14 to multiply, but a negative 9 to add. So there are two ways we can get positive answers with multiplication. The numbers could both be negative, or the numbers could both be positive. That's back at the beginning when we talked about that. So if I want to add to get a negative number, and multiply to get a positive number, I need two negative numbers. So I'm going to use these two numbers. So I have a negative 2 and a negative 7. I made sure that those added up to negative 9. So then I write my fraction. I have 1 over negative 2 and 1 over negative 7. And the x squared gets split up, so I have 1x minus 2, reading straight down. And then read straight down again, 1x minus 7. So let's do another one. Here we have a is 1, b is negative 3, and c is negative 40. So again, there's nothing that those three have in common, so we don't have to worry about that. 1 times negative 40 gives me negative 40. So I want two numbers that multiply to get negative 40, and then my b is what I want them to add to get to, add to get a negative 3. So let's look at the factors of negative 40. We have 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 3 doesn't work, but I could do 4 and 10, 5 and 8, 6 does not work, 7 does not work, and I have 8 written down. But if I want a negative 40, then I need one number to be negative. And if I want it to add to be negative, I want my bigger number to be negative. Because remember, the bigger number controls the sign of addition. So now I can go back and I see which pair of these adds up to be a negative 3. And that would be this one. So I'd have a 5 and a negative 8. So I might write my fractions, 1 over 5 and 1 over 8. Neither can be reduced, so I'd have 1x plus 5, reading straight down, and 1x minus 8, reading straight down. And again, we normally don't write those 1's in there. We usually just write x plus 5 and x minus 8.